Yeah. Okay, shall I start? Yep. Right ho. Um, well, I, I'd better start by saying I'm Vincent Gray. I'm a retired scientist and I've had a long career in science. I'm originally a physical chemist from Cambridge University and I've worked in research laboratories all over the world, Britain, France, uh, Canada, uh, New Zealand and China. And today I want to talk about Charles Darwin his, and his ideas and, to, and his scientific uh, achievements and their relevance to the world we live in today. So we will start with Darwin. Okay, we'll walk through. Okay, well here goes on Darwin. Charles Darwin made two very important contributions to science. He greatly increased the amount of evidence that the organisms on the earth have all evolved from previous forms. And he provided an explanation as to how it happened. The idea of evolution was not necessarily new in, in Darwin's time. In fact, his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, had uh, produced some ideas on evolution. But Darwin uh, amassed so much evidence that evolution had happened and was happening that it became very well and very thoroughly established. And I may say that the evidence has accumulated even more so that today the fact of evolution is probably one of the best established of all scientific discoveries let us just summarize it. The fact of evolution is dependent on two sets of evidence. First, the remains of creatures that existed in previous geological ages, which are preserved in ancient sedimentary rocks. This evidence shows previous organisms are of two kinds. They are either ancestral to organisms today, that is to say, they appear to be ancestors. They are different, but they have relationships with the organism that exists today. The further you go back, the more remote this relationship becomes. Well, now there's a second piece of evidence, and this is based upon the fact that evolution can be seen to happen. Humans carry out evolutionary activity themselves the, uh, they, they are able to breed better race horses, goldfish, wheat, pine trees by selecting from a variety and breeding from that variety and then continuing this from one generation to another. Most of us are familiar with the fact that evolution actually happens, sometimes very quickly. I mean, for example, I recently went down with a bout of flu, which I was told was a different, uh, a different uh, form of flu, which had just, just evolved. So some organisms evolve extremely rapidly. Others evolve very, very slowly. But there is no question to today that all organisms evolve. Well, now, offspring of all organisms, as Darwin noted, have strange properties. They first of all resemble their parents, but secondly, they vary between each other. There is a variety amongst the offspring of all organisms. And it is that particular group amongst this variety which survive the problems they face when they come into the world, who are then the parents of the next generation. And then one after another, over the many years, this leads to a change in the organism. The phrase, the survival of the fittest, uh, which was invented by Herbert Spencer, does describe how evolution goes on. The, 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 uh, amongst the many offspring of any in individual, the few that are fit to survive, that manage to cope, are the ones that are the parents of the next generation. This is how evolution works. Now, this, these facts are fully established from a scientific point of view, but very few people wish to go along with the consequences of these facts. Darwin himself had a great struggle 
with working out his con con these consequences. And indeed, even his own contemporaries, very few of them, would go along to the, the, the uh, just conclusions that Darwin himself reached. The consequences are really fairly drastic. He has shown that there is a mechanism by which the creatures on the earth have come into existence which does not involve any form of creation. That there is no place in this system for creation. It is purely a matter of variety, um, survival, and uh, one generation to another. There is no creator, and so there is no place for a creator. The next level is even much more difficult, and it was much more difficult for Darwin himself. You have to appreciate that humans uh, have evolved in exactly the same way as every other organism. In the time of Darwin, there were no or very few fossils of early human organisms. It was only in Darwin's day, for example, that the first ones, that the Neanderthals, were discovered. But today, we have a large number of early human ancestors showing that humans evolved in exactly the same way as everyone else. Now, Darwin faced the fact that his wife was an enthusiastic Christian, and therefore he had great difficulty coming to the view which I think is inevitable from examining evolution, and that is, if humans are this, uh, have evolved just like anything else, they do not have any special privileges. There cannot be any special supervising deity or some uh, body who, who would intervene in human affairs. There can be no afterlife. Death is death. Death is, in fact, necessary for evolution. Evolution cannot take place if organisms do not die. And therefore, there is no case for any form of religion. Now, people, I think, as an instinct from some of the early years of human existence, seem to wish to believe in, an, in a, 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 a supervising body, in a god. But the evolution really has, does not, uh, has, it is, this is incompatible with the ideas of evolution. Well, I, I'll, I'll try and conclude and say that uh, evolution for the humans involves us in, in, uh, in improving our, our own way of life, particularly in terms of cooperating not only with ourselves but with others, that preventing conflict and preventing harmful um, activities such as war or atomic bombs or something, and that uh, if we ab avoid these uh, foolish philosophies which go against the ideas of evolution, um, then I hope the human race will actually at least survive, and I hope progress. Thank you.